Hello everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. Today we're going to prepare a very traditional dish, chiles en nogada. But before we get started with the recipe, I'm going to take you on a little history tour to show you the origin of this dish. This dish dates back over 200 years. In 1821, shortly after signing the Treaty of Cordoba, which gained Mexico's independence from Spain, General and Commander Agustin de Iturbe made his way through the town of Puebla. To honor the general and his men, the local Augustine nuns from the Santa Monica Covenant used in-season fruits and ingredients to create a delicious dish we now know as chiles en nogada. The finished dish featured the colors of the Army's flag, red, white, and green, the same colors that were later adopted for what we now know as the Mexican flag, which is why this dish is very popular around Mexican Independence Day, but it can also be served around the holidays. This is one of those dishes that's full of tradition, history, and flavor. Now we're gonna move on to the preparation of the recipe. First, we're gonna soak one cup of walnuts in very hot water for about one to two hours. This is gonna help to loosen up the skin and it's gonna be much easier to remove. Next, we're gonna move on to the poblano peppers. You can roast them on a comal over an open flame or on the grill. These can also be roasted in the air fryer. Just be very careful and not to leave them in there for too long. Otherwise, they'll become too soft, and you don't want them to be too soft. Otherwise, they will break open when it comes to stuffing them. Once they're nice and blistered on all sides, transfer them to a bowl or a plastic bag and allow them to rest for about 20 minutes. This is going to help the peppers to sweat, and it's going to make it much easier to peel later on. Since the comal is still nice and hot, we're going to roast the five Roma tomatoes. Once they're nice and blistered on all sides, we're going to remove them and we're going to remove the skin before we transfer them to the blender. Blend the tomatoes with no other ingredients and set it aside until it's ready to use. Using a molcajete, we're going to grind one stick of cinnamon. You can also use ground cinnamon for this recipe, but using the fresh cinnamon is going to add even more flavor to the dish. Once it has a nice powdery texture, we're going to add in the cloves and the thyme. Grind the rest of the ingredients until everything is well broken down. Then remove it from the molcajete. Add a little bit of water to the molcajete to get the remainder of the residue from the spices and set it aside. In a medium stock pot or a heavy bottom pan, heat up one tablespoon of manteca or your preferred cooking oil. Once it's nice and hot, add in half an onion finely chopped and three garlic cloves. Saute for about a minute over medium heat or until the onion and the garlic are nice and fragrant. Then we're gonna add equal amounts of ground beef and ground pork. I'm gonna use one pound of ground pork and one pound of ground beef. You can also prepare this recipe by just using the ground beef or the ground pork, but using a combination of both adds even more flavor to the dish. Using the spoon, we're gonna break down the meat and we're gonna mix it in with the onion and the garlic. And we're gonna cook over medium heat for about 10 minutes or until you no longer see red in the meat. At this point, I'm gonna season the meat with salt and fresh cracked pepper. This is completely to your liking. I'm only gonna add a little bit at this time and if we need more, we can always add more later. Next, we're gonna add in the seasonings that we grounded in the molcajete, along with a fourth of a cup of roughly chopped piloncillo. And don't forget to add in the water from the molcajete. We don't want any of those seasonings to be left behind. Mix in all those delicious seasonings and saute for an additional five minutes with frequent movement or until the piloncillo is well broken down and incorporated with the rest of the ingredients. This recipe requires a lot of prepping, but once you have everything ready, everything moves very smoothly. You can also prepare the filling the night before, and once it cools down, refrigerate it and leave it in the refrigerator overnight. By doing so, the flavors are gonna be even more intense the following day. The next day, all you would need to do is roast the peppers and prepare the walnut sauce. After about three to four minutes, we're gonna mix in the tomato sauce from the blender. Once we're done mixing in the tomato sauce with the rest of the ingredients, I'm going to turn down the burner to low. We're going to cover and simmer on low heat for about 12 to 15 minutes. During the process, we're going to come back and check on it every once in a while to move the meat around. And while the meat is cooking, we're going to peel and dice the fruit. These are already washed. Now we're just going to peel them and dice them. I'm going to use two of each, two pears, two apples, and two peaches. Once we're done peeling the fruit, we're going to dice it into small bite-sized pieces. The fruit is always best to peel it and dice it right before it's ready to use. If you prep it ahead of time, the apple's gonna start to turn a brown color. So it's always best to prepare it right before adding it to the pot. We're also gonna need one large ripe plantain. If you can't find a ripe plantain like this one, you can use one of the green ones. 
but before adding it to the pot, lightly fry it in a little bit of butter. When the nuns prepared this dish, they used in-season ingredients to their area. The ingredients you have on hand can vary depending on the area that you live in. Use ingredients that you feel will go right with this recipe and make it your own creation. The meat has been cooking for over 10 minutes. Now we're going to begin to add the rest of the ingredients. We're going to start by adding half a cup of finely chopped walnuts, half a cup of almonds, one cup of diced candied pineapple, and one cup of raisins. Mix in those ingredients and simmer over low heat for about two to three minutes with frequent movement. Then add one shot of sherry and the diced apples. I'm going to add the diced apples first because those take a little bit longer to cook. Mix in the apple and simmer over low medium heat for about two to three minutes with frequent movement. After two to three minutes, add in the rest of the ingredients, the diced plantains, the pears, and the peaches. Once we mix in the ingredients, we're going to turn down the burner to low and we're going to cover it and simmer on low heat for an additional 12 to 15 minutes. During the process, we're going to come back and check on it to move the meat around often. Depending on your liking, you can also cook it for a longer period until all the fruit has disintegrated. I like to have little chunks of fruit in mine. So at this point, I'm going to turn it off and we're going to keep it covered while we prepare the rest of the ingredients. Before we begin to peel the walnuts, we're going to fill a small bowl with one cup of milk. And then the peeling begins. This is another part of the recipe that you can prepare the night before. Sit down with your family and enjoy some good quality time with your family while peeling walnuts. As you peel each one, place it in the bowl with the milk and leave it soaking in the milk until it's ready to use. Next, we're going to move on to the pomegranate. I'm going to use a fresh pomegranate. You can also find seeds that are ready to use, but I found this beauty at the store so I knew I just had to have fresh pomegranate seeds. Cut it in half and then into fourths. The seeds come off very easily. Just be very careful and not to get it on your clothes because they do stain. Place them in a bowl and set them aside until they're ready to use. We're also going to chop a small handful of parsley to garnish the dish. To prepare the walnut sauce or the nogada, we're going to add in the walnuts that we were soaking in the milk to the blender along with the milk. We're also going to add the remainder of the almonds, 8 ounces of cream cheese or goat cheese, 1 cup of heavy cream, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, half a cup of sugar or more depending on how sweet you want the walnut sauce to be. And this last ingredient is optional, one shot of sherry. Blend the ingredients until you have a nice creamy sauce. The walnut sauce should have a nice thickness to it, but if it's too thick, you can add a little bit more milk, or if you want it a little thicker, you can add a little bit more of the heavy cream. The peppers have been resting for a little bit over an hour. I left them resting for a little longer than I intended to, but as you can see, they're still perfectly fine. Once we're done peeling the peppers, using a small paring knife, we're going to make a small incision close to the stem. Then using the paring knife very carefully, we're going to cut the seeds as close as you can to the stem. Then using a spoon, we're going to scoop out the seeds, and we're going to repeat the process with the rest of the peppers. I'm only going to prepare six. But with the amount of meat that we prepared, you can easily prepare between 10 to 12 chiles and nogada. By this time, you're probably wondering, this looks delicious, but what do I serve it with? Serve them just by themselves in a bath of walnut sauce. Or you can serve them with a side of white rice or any of your favorite rice recipes. May I suggest my Christmas rice recipe? That recipe would go deliciously with these chiles and nogada. You can find the link for that recipe in the description of this video. The combination of all the ingredients used to prepare this dish is an explosion of flavor in every bite. I hope you give this recipe a try because it's absolutely delicious. This is one of those dishes that's rich in culture and history, and I'm dying to try it because it's one of my favorites. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit of the history of this dish. If this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can receive notifications each time we upload a new video. And make sure to share with friends and family so they don't miss out on future recipes. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in our next video with a different recipe.